Mega Praise Ministries. We're out to reach the lost, to bring the lost sheep back home, to build a relationship between God and man, for the worship, the presence, the healing, the restoring. That's what it's about, the restoring of the homes, the restoring of the families, the healing of the bodies, to enjoy a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We love the worship. We love the outpouring of the presence of God. This is what this ministry is all about, Mega Praise Ministries, to see what that was that was lost. And we're going to have a wonderful dancer here by the name of Sonia from Canada in Mr. Engineer. And Sonia, let the Lord use you. Jesus, praise the Lord. It was, he is Jehovah. By our wonderful anointed dancer, be dancer before the Lord opens up the portals of heaven. Anywhere she dances, she just dances for the Lord, our dear friend Sonia. And I know you were blessed by that piece there. And I just want to welcome you. Many of you know me. I'm Pastor Manuel Johnson. This is only the truth. Hallelujah. And I have a wonderful anointed guest here by the name of Derek Gates from Derek Gates Ministries, and many of you know him, so I know you, we're on, we're on Facebook, uh, Intergra Inter Instagram, and Twitters, and all the, the uh, outlets there for the media, and we're being shown in many nations, over 35 nations, including Israel, we love you Israel, we love you, we support you out there, and you know the best is yet to come for all of us, but I want to just uh, welcome our guest here, uh, Apostle Derek Gates. God bless you. God welcome, bless you, welcome. Pastor Manny. God Amen. bless you. Amen. And you know, he was with us last night, and 
the Lord used him mightily, and you know, he was talking to us and ministering to us. I ministered just a little bit, but he also Derek Gates ministered, and like a tag team setting, and he was ministering on how God gives us these divine dreams. These divine dreams, and why, you know, we, we, we see things take place, how the enemy comes in and likes to steal things in the natural, but he also steals things in the spirit realm too. And, and so that insight that, he, that, that the Lord has given him and imparted into us was wonderful. It was just wonderful. I'm going to talk about something that you don't really hear too much on the American outlet. What do you think I'm going to talk about? Nothing creepy, but it's actually a normal thing in the kingdom of God. Literally raising the dead. Literally raising the dead. Many, uh, you know, I heard about it. I, you know, the only time I actually see it, it's on television. <laughs> and, it's, and it's usually like half a world away from me. Is that possible in the United States? Yes, it is. You know, yes, it is. We read it in the Bible, the Old Testament, Eli Elijah, you know, raised the dead. Elijah raised the dead. We see what took place with Jesus. Many times the dead was risen in, in the time of Jesus. In the time of the disciples, the dead was risen. Peter, God, uh, Apostle Paul. We see this many times where God is actually doing what we think is the impossible the, is possible. Now, I'm not saying that God has called me to go around laying hands on dead people. No. I want to make it clear to you. But we were in a situation a few days ago, me and my wife, when we were heading to, to Nevada. And my, my wife needed something. So we were right in the middle. And, and Apostle Derek Gates, we were in the middle of no man's land. So we stopped at this gas station, very, 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 very much hick town, but wonderful people, but it was very hicky. <laughs> and I think it was the only gas station for like 20 miles. And so anyway, I went to go purchase something and then I noticed there were people around and as the people were around, I said, what's going on? He said, this man just had a heart attack, heart attack and he died and they're trying to resuscitate him and he couldn't do it. They did everything. So I immediately started to pray in the spirit. And I saw his daughter on the other side just bawling her eyes out. Bawling her eyes out because saying, Daddy, Daddy, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. And I went to her. I said, Ma'am, what what's his name? He says, Charlie. So me and my wife started praying and calling it out. Charlie, Charlie, come back. Come back into your body. You, you, I know you can hear me. Come back in the name of Jesus. Come back. We command you to come back. We have never done anything like that before. We've seen miracles. We've seen miracles in our services. We weren't at the service. We didn't have, you know, and, and everybody there was just, the anxiety level was beyond. You know, we couldn't get anybody to pray with us. No one was, you know, because they were just so, just emotional. So emotions were high. Right. So we knew we were up against, but we were praying. This happened a few days ago, and we were praying about 20 minutes. And then I get, well, I guess, then we saw the paramedics come, and they were trying to resuscitate him. And to no avail, while we were watching, it wasn't happening. So we're praying. I said, okay, Lord, I, you know, your will be done. And as I was leaving, we were praying. And then about 10 minutes into that, 10, 15 minutes into that, I see a vision of Charlie, a day vision as I'm driving, and he says, thank you. And I tell my wife, I says, Charlie's in heaven. Charlie's in heaven. Because right at that time, we were starting, we shifted prayers to, from this, uh, you know, resuscitating and bring him back to life, to Lord, Lord, I pray that Charlie would have rest in you. That was the last 15 minutes, so we shifted. We knew that was answered, but there still was a closure. There was no closure for me. I said, Lord, I've heard about it, and I was thinking about you, Derek. I was thinking about your ministry. I was thinking about that. Derek says, Derek, Derek has, has been used in this area, and many others, and he's the only one that I know in America that, that, that will look deaf in the eye 
and commanded to leave. And I said, Lord, what happened? I'm glad that Charlie's in heaven, but I still have, I still have a problem. So a few days on our way back, I had to stop at that gas station again. And the, one of the employees said, I remember you. You're the man that was praying. I said, I just want to know what happened to Charlie. He said, after you left, I know you were praying as you left, but as, after you left, boom, life came back into him. Hey. Life came back into him. Sisters and brothers, the power of God works. I, that, listen, in all our ministry, I've never experienced that. I've, I've seen miracles, but I've never seen that. And I should have had it stuck around for another five minutes. I would have saw my prayers being answered. But it happened. He said, Charlie was revived again as you were praying. And I took off. And I said, well, I know, but I had a vision. He said, I had a vision later on that he said, thank you. And I, he was going into heaven. He said, yes, he was revived for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then as he was going to the hospital on that same freeway that I was on, he was going to the hospital. He had another massive heart attack. And they didn't revive him the second time. He says, Yo, your prayers were answered first and second because you shifted and asked for God to give him rest in you. And that's what he thanked you. And I go, whoa, glory to God. Come on. His daughter was saying, Charlie, don't need me. Daddy, don't leave me. And I was praying, Char Charlie, come back into your body. Say goodbye to your daughter. And then we'll see what the Lord does. And God answered the prayers. But you know what? Why isn't it happening? Happening? Why is it that, you know, I'm talking about sanctified, spiritual Christians can pray for this. We can lay a hand on a car. We can lay a hand on a house. We can lay a hand on, 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 on prayer requests. But when it comes to the dead, why is it, Apostle Derek, that, that we run from it instead of face it like Goliath? Fear. It's fear. Uh, there's a finality to death. Mm -hmm. There's a finality to death. So we can pray for healing and believe that they get healing later if we don't see it. We can pray, pray, pray for a financial breakthrough and believe that people receive financial breakthrough once you leave. But death is final. Come on. Death is final. So <laughs> it's really a fear issue of, of God not showing up and doing what he says he's going to do. But the reality is this is that you will never see somebody raised from the dead if you don't step out on the water and do it. Uh, the fact is, God has called us, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse the leper, and set the captives free. All of those things, every single believer has the authority from heaven to do. And the reason we don't see it in America is because of fear. It's fear, fear, fear. We're fear-driven in our country. We're fear-driven by the finality of death. We're fear-driven by the lack of success. And we can even be fear-driven by success. And so with raising the dead, um, we're afraid of God not showing up. But God says, look, I am going to show up. And if they are not raised from the dead, then there is a reason why they're not raised from the dead. I, it, I've heard stories many times, you know, we, we filmed the movie and have 850 hours of interviews that we're editing right now on raising the dead. And many people talk about how um, there have been people raised from the dead that were saved in heaven. They were upset that they came back. They were like, we didn't want to come back. Don't you dare do that again. You know, so sometimes we don't see the dead raised because they're already in heaven. And they don't want to come back, you know. Um, but the reality is we don't see it happen in America because we don't do it. We don't do it. Most people wouldn't do what you did, Pastor Manny. Most people aren't going to put themselves out there in a place of risk to, 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 to even attempt to raise somebody from the dead. Right, right. Well, you know, I was, you know, it was interesting because when I went back the second time and the employee said, you know, I saw you praying. I was watching you. I didn't think anybody was really watching me because they were so busy just mourning and they're just over this, 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 this corpse. And it, you can tell it was a corpse. His, by his spirit was not there. Right. And, but the scenario of it is, he's told me, he said, you know, I should have prayed with you. I should have prayed with you. That's what he told me. He said, I should have prayed with you. And, uh, um, but God wanted me to go back because I would have still had a void. 
I would have said, well, it's not for me. I can't do that. This is not my calling because I didn't see it. I, he got into heaven, but I didn't see the, re, you know. And we, we've been in Nevada before, driving from California off to the 15. We've never, ever stopped there. It was our first time. And I know that God had was, you know, I'm looking at this, this guy. I'm looking at Charlie. I'm thinking about all this. And I said, Lord, was this for Charlie or was this for me? Mm -hmm. Lord, were you taking my, were you stretching my face of faith another, to another mile? Because nobody in there, and I mean, the odds were against us. Because we got five minutes, now it's 10 minutes, now it's 15 minutes, and he's still dead. Now it's 20 minutes, and he's still dead. And nobody in there but me and my wife are the only one praying. You know? And I'm still at the same time trying to calm down the daughter. She's being hysterical, you know? And, um, and I wasn't getting anywhere with her. So I just needed to try, and there was no really place in there that I can get alone but my car. But <coughs> God had showed me something. The Lord showed me something that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Mm. This is the first time I've ever looked death in the eye and looked at it like, look at, looked at it like the life I'm bringing you down. Something happened to me. I've never prayed for a dead person that literally was dead like that. This is the first time that I actually prayed and I felt the Holy Spirit telling me to keep going, keep praying. And I'm going to tell you something. I can't explain it, Apostle Derek, but I felt Charlie's spirit in there. And I actually thought the way you thought, I don't think he wants to come back. And... I felt his spirit. I could not tell you where he was, but I felt that he was there and that there was a toga war. But I knew that I could not quit. And I didn't quit. I just allowed the Lord to lead me. Had I, so I saw my prayers being answered in both ways. There are times God wants you to resurrect maybe for that moment. And that was the case with Charlie. He had 15 minutes of life after that. But he didn't know Jesus. Right, right. He knew of Jesus. Right. That's why the Lord had me to switch it to look, it. give him the rest. I said, and I've never prayed this before. You know, most of our prayers is, Lord, save him, visit him, and all that. That wasn't coming out of my, my, my spirit. The Holy Spirit was releasing me and says, pray that Charlie will find rest in Jesus. Mm. Pray that Charlie will find rest in Jesus. It's almost as if an angel was speaking in my ear, telling me what to speak in the spirit realm. Mm. And it happened. That's right. And I didn't expect it. And I'm going on a freeway, and I didn't expect to see the vision, of, an open vision of Charlie. That man was more alive than I was. He was more so, so uh, uh, bright and just full of life. And he looked at me, and all he just said was, thank you. Come on. He didn't call my name. He didn't say, he just said, thank you. So he, so he knew me and Shiva was praying. He knew I was praying for his soul. He, he knew I was praying that the Lord, that he would find rest in the Lord. So I'm going to see him in heaven one day. That's right. And the guy at the, at the store was saying how Charlie was such a good man, and he, his wife passed away. He was about eight, over, over 80 years old, mm. and he had had heart problems. What do you see? Derek, your ministry is a ministry like David, you know, that confronts the enemy. Instead of run for the enemy. Yeah. There are kings that run for the enemy. And there are kings that confront the enemy. King Saul ran from the enemy. But David, King David, confronted the enemy. Your ministry is, 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 a, is a ministry, a ministry of boldness. A spirit of boldness. That we're not really seeing the way we should see. Now, I know the remnants are out there. But, you know, some of us, God doesn't want all of us to be, do remain remnants in hiding places, you know, when many times mm. we need to come out. Right. And you come out. You, 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 and you've had challenges as any ministry or any man of God would. But yet, you, you keep going. And I know that there are people that are watching us, and they're watching us in other outlets and networks too, because sure. we're going to re-air it. 
look at that camera and tell the people, tell the ministers out there that are right now, that has discouragement, that they want to quit the ministry, give them something, give them hope, mm. give them a word. You know, the, what the Lord has really been speaking to me the last several months is that if you truly, if you truly want to go after the anointing that God has poured onto your life and into your life, you have to be willing to go through that process, Come Pastor on. Manny, because it's the process that prepares you for your position in this life. Mm. It's the process that prepares you for your promotion. It's the process that prepares you for your platform. Come on. And if you're not willing to go through the crushing, look, so many people, they don't want to deal with the crushing in their life. They don't want to deal with the things that happen in mm. your life, but it's that crushing. You cannot get the kingly oil mm. unless, you, unless you crush the mm. olive. Oh! You cannot get the oil of heaven unless you get crushed. You cannot get the new wine, Pastor Manny, unless you crush the grape. It's in the crushing. It's in the crushing where you really discover what God has done in you and wants to do through you. Woo! Because listen, Pastor man, you can steal my life. You can steal my breath. But the one thing you can't take from me is what God called me to do. You can't, you can steal my very breath, but you cannot take my anointing from me. And that's what I'm after. I'm after the anointing. I'm after what God has put in me. And I'm after when I go someplace, I'm looking for the anointing of every individual. And I'm looking to reach in and pull it up and out of them to where they can be who God has called them to be. If we would lift up other people into their destiny, we would reach destiny by default. If we would, re if we would just lift people up, if we would lift people up and begin to really hold each other up, we would see people's destiny. We would see that anointing. We would all be willing to storm the gates of hell together. Listen, God is looking for frontline soldiers in this season. He's tired of people sitting in the foxhole and praying for help to, be, to come. And he's saying, I have anointed you for such a time as this to storm the gates and take back from the enemy what he has stolen. He has anointed you for this. He has anointed you for this. And every leader that's watching this, every ministry leader that's watching this, he is tired. He is tired of you ignoring the boldness that he has already put in you. Come on! He come is on. tired of you ignoring what he has already put inside you. He has made you a lion. He has made you a lion. Now it's time to roar. Whoa! My God! Hallelujah! Jerry, give me those books there that you have written. Now we have. A, are we gonna because it's t you, we have a book here that says "Death to Destiny." From death to destiny, excuse me. From death to destiny, the devil tried to kill me. And this is by Derek Gates. But you know, as you see, he's here live and well. It didn't work. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so you, get Lord. this book. And uh, where can we get it from your mouth? Yeah, DerekGates.com. DerekGates.com. We also have a, a, a Deliverance, How to Stay Free by Derek Gates. DerekGates.com. And we also have, whoa, the powerful message about communion, the blood by Apostle Derek Gates. All from DerrickGates.com. So support the man of God. Hallelujah. Support the man of God. And I think, I, I want you to, now I, listen, none of this avails if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know who he is. You know, to, to the Jews, he's the Messiah, mm. Yahshua. Yahshua is your Messiah to the Jews. Yes. Read this book of Psalms. Read Isaiah 53. He is the Messiah, for sure. To the Gentiles, it's Jesus. Jesus came for all nations because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Saints, you can't just know of Jesus. You just can't go to church. That's not enough. You have to be born again. I can be a Bible scholar. I can be all of this. I can read the Bible through and through but, and, and know the scriptures. But I have to be born again. You have to be born again. That is the scriptures. Right. How? By calling on the name of the Lord. Hey. You cannot do it on your own works. It's not by your works or know your power, but by his spirit. Whoa. Born again. Right now, pray with us. Jesus, come into my life. Mm. Yeah, sure, come into my life. Yes, Lord. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you're the Messiah. Yes. And Lord, I ask that you will wash me in your precious blood. Mm. You went to Calvary, 
and you play and you pay the bloody price that you didn't know and we owe a, a bloody debt that we could never pay but only to your blood we're blood washed and we blood bought because of you Lord yes Lord receive us write your our names in the Lamb's Book of Life yes. and fill us with your precious Holy Spirit yes and teach us your ways teach us your ways that we may live a righteousness through Christ Jesus if you pray with me with all your heart and you meant it you've been born again those of you that are watching us around the world you've been born again hallelujah so this thing and you can celebrate and listen listen we want to continue to get the gospel out we want to continue to support the work of the Lord and one of the ways you can do that is by we have our, our newest book God's Air Force God's Air Force but my beautiful wife Dr. Sheba Johnson God's Air Force, it'll be shown there on the screen. God's Air Force, you go in this very powerful revelation. And it talks about the militants of being in the army of God. And you will be blessed by it. And just send in, just send in, send in the, any amount. We're having a very, very special amount here. Just send in a very, any amount. And we want to send this book out to you this month. Any amount. We want to send this book out to you, God's Air Force. And this gift to thank you for sowing the seed in our ministry and, and, and being support for it. We love you for that. We've been getting, we have prayer requests here from our ministry and from ministry and places around the world. Dear, uh, Apostle David, let's lay your hands on it right now. We're believing God. He continue to send the prayer request in. Continue to send it in. We believe in God. Lord, we, we believe right now for healing. We believe for breakthroughs. We're believing, Lord, for set free. We believe for financial breakthroughs, personal breakthroughs, Lord, spiritual breakthroughs. De uh, uh, Apostle David, speak over these prayer requests. Yes, About 30 Jesus. seconds. Go ahead. We just thank you, Father, right now. We lift up every single person oh. who wrote on these things. Yes. Every single believer, every single uh, child that's hurting, every single uh, person that's believing for restoration of their Come marriage. On. Come on. Every single person that's believing right now for healing over cancer. And we just rebuke that cancer. We rebuke the devil. We just lift these prayer requests up right now. Mm. In Jesus' name, we just thank you, Lord, for healing restoration financial breakthrough financial breakthrough in Jesus, Jesus name. name amen and I want you to believe for your breakthrough God hears the prayers of a righteous yes and it, it, they avail very much if you, once again you can get a hold of us by megapraiseministries.com megapraiseministries.com you can call our prayer line this is 24 24 hours call our prayer line our, it's, it's our order line just call it and we want to help you we want to be a party we want to connect with you on all the, the media outlets. We love you, and, you know, we're going to see you next time here on Only the Truth, and we just want to thank the Lord for you. Continue to write. Continue to send it in. Continue to connect with us. And, and Apostle De De uh, Derry Gates, thank you. Thank you again, and we're going to have you back here on Only the Truth. Oh, yeah. We love, love you, you guys. We will see Hallelujah. you next time here on Only the Truth. I'm yeah. Pastor Daniel Johnson. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.